Welcome back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike, and I got my lineman Matt with me. And today we're going to go over some some uh, hockey playoff news. But before I get into that, I'm just going to let everybody know. You know, we've been gone for the past few weeks. I moved, and um, moving sucks. And uh, but and I couldn't find my microphone. It was it was in a box that I had marked, and somehow this box got mar- was was moved to like the bottom of the moving pile so when they <laughs> when they moved everything in like this stuff was all the way down at the bottom dude i was like gosh dang it, i can't find my freaking there goes mic. the neighborhood <laughs> but anyways we're we're good to go now and we're going to give you some uh, some some playoff news matt um, the playoffs have been been pretty good, but it seems like things have kind of been moving oddly in a way that they should be moving. I was expecting you know Vancouver to move on. I was expecting Edmonton to move on. Um, I, I actually thought that the Kings would would give them a little bit stronger run for their money because I, I but they didn't, man. The Kings kind of laid down. And uh, Dallas, man, has been, man, they've been a force to be reckoned with since, you know, since it started. I didn't think that they were going to be as, as big of a deal as they are. What, what about you? Well, dude, they've had the toughest path, I think. They, they had to face the defending champs. Yeah. They handled them pretty well. They just knocked off another, you know, contender, uh, Nathan McKinnon and his squad, Kale McCarr. Yeah, and honestly, man, they're they're probably the most complete team in the West. And Dallas, yes. And if you think about it, the winner of the Oiler Vancouver series, this is probably going to be their. I, I'd say like these last the, the the last two series opponents were better than these guys. I think Vegas is better than Edmonton and and Vancouver right now, and so was Colorado. They got that Stanley Cup pedigree, so. This could be, it could be a a good little series, whoever it's going to be. I think Dallas is still going to be the favorite. I was really surprised, man, you know, that, you know, Colorado, they had some adversity this year, but I was expecting them to, um, I was expecting them to win the cup. I did not see, you know, Nikushkin, this problem happening, man. And and to be honest with you, I I, I think that completely screwed them. I think it screwed him that game. I, what was that game five? Might yeah. have been game five, and it just kind of hit him like, oh, like man, they found out an hour of, beforehand that he was one of our play. best guys. Yeah, and you know what, man? It, I, I know people have addiction issues. I've had family with addiction issues. It's it's a it's a mean bitch. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, he let his teammates down. Yeah, That's he did. just the fact. And you know those guys were relying on him. He was a, scoring a lot of goals for him, and it. It it's it hurt them, and they couldn't overcome it. The only thing, um, kind of sad to see Zach Parise. That might have been his last yeah. game. You know, he was a good American player. Uh, you know, he signed that crazy, ridiculous deal with Minnesota. I think they're still paying. On clearly, that. didn't work out. He's still getting paid for that. Uh, absolutely. He, I think he was with uh, Suter. Yeah, no, well, yeah, Suter, yeah, Suter's on Dallas. It's kind of cool how those guys met up this that last series. And uh, but I, Parise jumped around a little bit. He went to uh, I think he was with the Islanders, and then yeah. he ended up wanting to play with the big dog, Nate Dog, and uh, just uh, fell short. But uh, if he's done, he's pretty solid career. But you know, he still would have loved to get his name on that cup. It's too bad, man. I'm I'm pulling for Joe Joe Pavelski, man. He is. Uh, <laughs> the ultimate, ultimate hockey player. Got tons of respect for that guy. I hope he can get his name on a cup. I think Parisi was pretty deserving. Deserving doesn't I, always get it, though, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think um, he deserved it with San Jose. I think uh, I don't want to go there again because everybody knows how I feel about it. Oh, Pavelski. I think he should have been a shark for life. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Dallas is very happy with that guy. I mean, the numbers aren't there this year, but... You know what? Next next series, dude. I bet you he comes up clutch. He shows up in big moments. He's yeah, he just, does. Uh, one of those guys you want on your team. What about the Rangers? They're up. Um, you know, they're a big time on the Canes. You know, they kind of gave them some life there to to come back. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of I was a little worried there for a second. Well, it was funny to see the fans just lose their minds, <laughs> and you know, the Canes fans are a pretty passionate group, but they can get annoying at times. Uh, it was just funny kind of seeing these both of these fan bases freak out and 
And uh, actually, I heard Rod Brendamore signed uh, an extension today, or the agreement was made. I'm not sure how long, but we'll get into that in a second. Don't think that is ha- it's never been the issue with those guys, and I I think it's uh, time to move on from the the goaltending project. I know they got some young guys, and uh, Rance has kind of been up and down. AHL Freddie Anderson, he he actually played. He played well. But uh, you might want to invest some money in or a trade and get a guy that you know can steal you some wins and shows up and you know can can get you to the next round because these guys are the Maple Leafs of the second round, I believe. And I'm not saying that to be mean, but they're always picked to go farther, and experts always pick them to win the cup, and they always just second round hit a hit a rut. So I don't know why they're them. always they're always like a cup contenders. I like I don't see it. They're you know they're studs in the regular season, but yeah. then they completely die when it comes to the playoffs. I, I mean, I not as bad as is. not as bad as Toronto, but yeah. Well, they they got a well balanced team. They got good depth and good defensive, and it's just the goaltending. I think it kind of just it hurts them with the injury, mostly the injuries, because they're still, they're good goalies, but they just get hurt at the wrong times and. Sometimes they're flipping goalies. I think uh, Brenda Moore panicked and put in that Petrikov or whatever his name is, a young Russian goalie. He played well. I think he stole him one game, and they went back to Freddie, and you know they won another game. But it's still you, you got to the Rangers are a good team. You got to give them props to, and Panarin has finally showed up. Yeah, and that's something they've been waiting for a long time. Shesterkin's been solid, and it, you got to give them credit too. But you know, I, yeah, yeah, they didn't. They didn't, you know, quit when they were down all three nothing. You know, they were they they showed up. They played hard. They got a win. They did it again. And the Rangers they started panicking a little bit. So I give them props. Rod had them fighting to the end. It's just, uh, yeah, I I think they're they kind of lacking that superstar guy too. You know, they are big you time. A, you need a game breaker, and they got. I, I don't know if you heard the story today that Marty Nikas, the young uh, Czech player he's a restricted free agent and um there's a lot of hawks rumors because he wants to play on the first line and he's not going to play on the first line there i think he's a top six guy you know of course everybody wants to play on a first line every pro they want to be that guy but yeah his dad has even come out and said yeah he i think he wants to be traded He, he wants top line minutes so there's hawks rumors like hey let's go get this guy i personally don't think I would want to overpay a top six guy. I think I would be patient to see what Leon Dreisaitl is going to do when his contract's up or whatever they're going to do. I think I'd rather have him and yeah, I mean, spend money on a guy. That would be the guy. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, but he still has one year left on his contract, doesn't he? Yeah, I believe so. But I, you know, we're not going to be. I think we'll be a little bit better than last year. We're going to have obviously going to be more entertaining to watch with a lot of these kids getting a chance. That might be good. You know, you don't want to get the guy here and he's going to be miserable for a year. You'd rather wait it out and kind of get your team established, who's going to make it, and then fill in the pieces. Yeah, you can and also I think tell. I'd rather have dry sidle. You could also tell him, like, hey, man, we're, we're building this up right now. You know? Yeah. And I know that maybe you want to compete right now, but this we're building this up so that we are uh, we are ready for the playoffs and sustained success in the playoffs whereas in Edmonton it's like you know he's essentially carrying the team with McDavid he's like hey we're gonna give we're gonna have some complimentary pieces to give you a hand and and carry some and pick up some of the slack so that you don't have to do everything yeah he was uh, great tonight Dreisaitl was great tonight he was shooting he was everywhere tonight I hear he gets along with Bedard pretty well yeah, I think they got like a a little weird relationship or something. I think they did like some little like whatever sponsorship stuff or you know yeah, they got yeah. together and did some skates and it would be pretty cool. And could and you, you know imagine what? that? I I I thought it would be really cool to see like a McDavid and Bedard team. You know, I think that would be really cool. But the Oilers can't let him go. But honestly, if they lose the series. I was telling you earlier, if I'm McDavid, I'm not even, t- I'm going to take my skates off. I'm going to leave my pads on. I'm going right up to Kenny Holland's office. Okay, I'm done with this goaltending experimentation. This guy here, we got a new goalie almost every single year. We need a guy. 
it's kind of like the, the the Canes. We need a guy that like a John Gibson or Jacob Markstrom, some Saros. Go and get somebody. I, I can't do this anymore. I'm sick of these losing, winning these games six to five. I have to score. We got to get six goals to win a game sometimes. So that's what I would do if I was McDavid. That's nuts. It's it's like it's more, offense, more offense, more yeah. offense, more offense. Especially in the playoffs, because some it's going to be low scoring at times. And look, look at they scored five today, and you know they just the the Canucks couldn't get anything going. And Skinner played well, but I don't think he's he's the guy. And you know they thought Jack Campbell was the guy. They they've had a lot of goalies over the last couple of years. They're like Bears quarterbacks. They seem to change every two years. And <laughs> it just doesn't work, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um... Main issue, we, we talked early. These teams that are getting bounced, the main bullet point is the goaltending. The Leafs, not a starting goalie. The Oilers are still in it, but not a starting goalie. The Canes eliminated. They're, they're hanging goaltending by is a controversy. It, it, they got to... <laughs> even all the experts at uh, NHL Series Radio, cool, you signed Rod. You got Rod that extension. The coach was never the issue, but... Having a good coach is a great thing, but go get a goalie now. <laughs> That's what they're saying. <laughs> and I'm, I'm loving those posts all day because we, we say that too. We're not stupid. But these uh, these uh, Carolina Hurricanes fans, they're, they love their team. No, 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 we're keeping our team. Why would you love your team? You're, you're getting bounced every every second round. It can't be fun. You, yeah. you got you to gotta get to the final. you got to win. I mean, I, I, I couldn't take it, man. Don't I'd rather th- be in last place than get bounced the same every year. Yeah, it, it's like, a, I don't want to say a dick tease, but it's like, at, at one point is enough enough, you know? I mean, a dry sidle, McDavid, you would think these guys would have a cup. Matthews, Marner, you know, uh, you would think that these guys would have a cup by now. You know, you- It's crazy. Look, look at uh, some, sometimes it takes really long for these superstars. It took Ray Bork 20-something years, I think. He yeah. finally got that cup with Colorado. Right. And, I mean, McDavid, I think he's on 10. I think he's on year 10 or 11. Like I told you, man, I think he's in yeah. the middle of his He's in the middle of his prime. He's going to be heading towards the end of his prime within the next year or two. And then at what point does he start getting injured? And if he's injured and he can't skate the way that he does, what, what, what game does he have left? Yep, they think something's wrong with him now. He's not shooting. They, uh, Kevin Weeks was talking about it. Just too much passing, and he thinks something's going on upper body. But he said the the lower body, the feet, they're moving. The legs are moving, but he's just not firing the puck like he should. Yeah. So I'm starting to think the wear down is already happening. Yeah, that's a problem, dude. That's a problem because he's supposed to be. I mean, they're they're expecting that. Okay, we're going to get up there one day and say that happens in three years from now. You know, what kind of condition is he going to be in? I mean, look what happened to Taves. Taves was. I mean, he his his body wasn't failing him in in the fact that it was out of shape or he was losing a step. You know, he had this these long COVID issues. Now. McDavid, on the other hand, what if you know he hits that fourteen year mark and he's like, you know what, my legs aren't aren't moving the way that they used to. McDavid is fast and he can operate at a very top speed, but what happens to everybody? Everybody slows down. Yep. Think of, think of Patrick Kane. His top ability is his vision so it doesn't really matter how fast he is he just sees the game differently than everybody does you can't take that away but with mcdavid you could take away his speed yeah the the dude's a freak though i mean he's full speed 100 miles an hour with the puck Mm -hmm. a lot of guys can't do that and he does it his his puck possession is great but like you said once you know they start wearing down on them, getting these, getting into these crazy playoff battles and falling short. Like you said, it 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 did a number on these guys. Seabrook, he had to retire early. You he know, had to have Taves, both of his he had to have both of his hips replaced. I both mean, of those them. guys sacrificed everything to get those cups. And uh, but they got him, know, and they got him. They, they got him. That's the that's they got him. McDavid is not there yet, and you know what? This is one guy. He's got to get his name on that cup. He could be one of the top five best players of all time. He has to get his name on yeah. that cup. 
Will he? If he would, he still be a top five player if he doesn't get a cup? Well, I I think he's no no matter what he'll find a way to get a cup if if it's with the Oilers or if it's with somebody else. So, he's, quick question. Yeah. Go on, go on ahead. And I, but I have a, I have a question for you. Keep on okay. going. Exactly what you're going with because I have something for you. Okay, so I I mean if he has got to do it with Bedard with the Blackhawks, I would absolutely love it. And if if he was a little bit older, slowing down, I would still love it because he's just a point freak, and he's <laughs> the type of guy that you'd love to see with Connor Bedard. Even Number, so is Drysidle. I don't think that they would player. put him on the same line. They wouldn't put McDavid and Bedard on the same line. Well, I think they would because I don't think Connor Bedard is a center in this mm. league. I just don't see it. I, you know, he, Sidney Crosby's his hero. He's his hero. You know, he's going to work out with them this offseason. And, and well, I know that they're going to work on face-offs. Well, I don't think it's just the face-off thing. I think he's just, he's not good defensively. I, I don't think he knows it yet. It's so different, juniors. You could just do what you got to do and, you know, go through the motions there at times. But in the NHL, you got to be more responsible. Right. And he, he's young. He's 18. I mean, it's it's a huge jump, and he learned he got a, he had a very bad plus minus on a very bad team, and it's his first year. He's got a lot of learning to do. Yeah, but uh, it, Sid wasn't that great either. Neither was Mario Lemieux. A lot of people don't know that either. He was very bad. His he first put up year, a ton of minus. a ton of points, but that was it. Connor could put up a ton of points too. The, the poor dude just got his freaking jaw leveled off. Oh, but, I know. Uh, you know, and I I gotta jump over to that Adam Oates uh, podcast. Did you see him uh, no. kind of criticizing Bedard? No, he I didn't. His stick, he thinks his stick is too long, causing him to reach for reach for pucks, and he's not protecting himself. And you know mm. what? A lot of Hawks fans came at this guy like, who does who the heck is Adam Oates? And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> look up Adam Oates before you start I criticizing know, this guy. I Ninety know. assists, and the dude's a Dude was awesome player, and it makes you like he, he never won a, the he, clips. He, he didn't win a cup though, did he? I don't know if he did win a cup. I know he was in the final with uh, the Capitals that one season with against Detroit. I think Detroit swept them. Oh, yeah, I think so. But he, very good player. He played with Brett Hall. Brett Hall absolutely loved him. You know, <laughs> Brett Hall loves a, everybody, man. He loves anybody who gets him the puck. Yeah, he you does. Know? And he that's does. what Adam Oates was good at. He was an assist machine. But going back to Bedard, he he was saying, like, it, it's weird. He gets hit when he shouldn't get hit. He, he, because he, he just, like, he's so nonchalant about, like, after he's getting rid of a pass, he kind of just admires it, he was saying. And <laughs> boom! Against Phoenix, he was getting hammered. And they showed the clips, and he was right, man. And then they showed, obviously, the jaw the jaw-breaking hit with, I think it was, uh, guy in the devils i forget his name yeah but, it was the devils yeah and, that was that he, <laughs> he bobbled the puck that he was... bobbled the puck yeah that was the game where the that was the turning point for the devils it was i really man. think it was it was dude it was that Every let's go beat up him. on the, the shitty blackhawks and flex our muscles <laughs> dude it and was they, that they war tanked. it was a war <laughs> I, it, I don't know what the hell was going on it was a cold winter night i'm in my truck listening and <laughs> I was like, I'm are like, you watching this? What is going on? I'm like, what, what did we do something to the devil or something? Like we we see him once a year, you know, and they they maybe they even listen to the and, podcast. Maybe they listen to the podcast on how we always how we were talking down to Jack Hughes. Uh, well, we were wrong because Hughes is a stud. He's, but he's good. He he hurt himself trying to be Claude Lemieux. Like, what are you doing, kid? You just scored forty goals last year, yeah. almost a hundred points, and you're out there trying to hit a guy, and you hurt your shoulder. Yeah, you just screwed your team, and and, and he just hit his shoulder the year before. The most, that was the most disappointing team this year. It's got to be that the Devils yeah. because that great series they had against the Rangers last year. They knocked them out and. Whoa! This is an up and coming team here, and they just shit the bed. Injuries. I was expecting a lot more. Me too, man. That, like I said, most disappointing team for sure. Devils. <laughs> it's. I was. It's actually really. I couldn't believe it. You know, like when I was watching that game, and then every time I checked in on them after that, it was like loss, loss. Uh, Jack Hughes is hurt again. Loss, yeah. loss, loss. But Luke Hughes, uh, he he continued on, and he had a great season. Yeah. 
good, very good player. I want I wanted player. to circle back with you on Connor McDavid really quick. Yeah. Is that a lot of people say if you're starting, you know, a team, who do you pick? You know, Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid, um, Leon Draisaitl, um, Austin Matthews. You know, and it's like, what about Jonathan Taves, dude? Yeah, you know, well, maybe current players they they don't really talk about the well they were they were t- well they were talking about Sidney Crosby and he's old you know, but w- what about Jonathan Taves? I mean, he well when you start a team are you getting him at a young age? Yes, that's my question. Yes, okay. If you're if you are starting a team and you're you're getting them from like dra- like draft day, let's say it's draft day, okay, and and l- let's even say that you have all of the information on these players. Um, in hindsight, you know, you can go yeah. back and draft somebody number one. I'm going to tell you what, man, I would draft Jonathan Taves number one because I think that he had the leadership type to push a team to their best and through hard times. And I don't think a lot of these other guys do, um, I'm, except for Sidney Crosby. I'll leave Sidney Crosby on the side of this. Um, but um, I, I think that I would go with Jonathan Taves, man. I would absolutely go with Taves just because we know the dude got sulkies. He got three Stanley Cups. He's got an MVP in the playoffs one season. Uh, he was a 35, 35 point, 35 goal, 50 assist guy. Hey. And I, yeah, I would, I would agree with you on that. And my runner up would be, you're going to laugh, but I think this guy is very, very underrated. Steven Stamkos. I think yeah. this guy, another Jonathan Taves like guy. The dude was playing hurt the first cup they had. Yeah, it, it's impressive. I mean, the guy went out there and he scored. He barely get his skates on. It, he had so much pain. He just wanted to get his name on that cup, and he, he scored a goal and won that game. Just crazy. But he's another guy. Like if this guy is not locked up, he's with the Lightning. If they don't figure it out, I, I'm going to be like so disappointed and. What, like, these franchise guys, what's, like, happening? You know, this is a guy that should be a lightning for life. Uh, like, Kane, he should have been a hawk for life. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's so different. Like, these guys just move on from them so quick. It's like, why don't we respect these guys? It's kind of like a you, you work for a business for, like, say, like, 25 years, and it's like, hey, you put in your time. We're going to take care of you. You made us money, and you've done your part. We want you to sh- lead the next way, and it's not like that anymore. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. just, all right, you're old. See you later. Kick you off to the curb and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like the, the Lightning, might they might actually do that with Stamkos, and that's just crazy, but he Taves absolutely would be a guy to start my franchise with and Steven Stamkos for sure. I, I know him, man. He's I- a very underrated guy. I think I would still go with Kaner, dude. And 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 the reason that I would do it is because Kane and Taves were um you only get one though, that's the thing. I okay. think if like you said, if you're going to start a team and Kaner's by himself, I I don't oh, think the team would be I, I as thought, good. I thought you were going with your number 2 pick. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just saying like a runner-up guy that oh, should get okay, love okay, would be my okay. would but I'm going to agree with you. I would absolutely go with Taves, too. Three okay, Stanley Cups, I, I thought you were, winner. Okay, I thought you were saying yeah. that you would draft Taves, and then you would draft Stamkos. Okay. Well, he'd be he'd be my runner-up guy, if, okay. uh, and it wouldn't so, be, like, together. If let me they, think they of would, a runner-up. Yeah. Let me think of a runner-up. Um, Crosby would be very close as well. Yeah, he would, man. Um, it, it's hard not to give Crosby that love, you know, of, of being the runner-up, uh, because... In, in all honesty, man, I think Taves, he had it from the beginning. The leadership and everything. He had it all. Crosby didn't. He, I would probably say five years in is when he really started to click. And not, not points-wise, not production-wise. I would say leadership-wise on, on being... Um, they threw that C on him quick, though, they dude. They did. They did. Yeah, they, they forced it. But I think that he was... Um, Probably five years in is when it started to click for him. And by that time, Taves had already won two cups and Crosby had one. So, yeah. Um, you know, Seabrook was supposed to be the future captain. Yeah, you told me. And then they drafted Taves and Dale Talon's like, well, geez, I just drafted this kid's an absolute born leader. 
And there's times where Siebes was the captain, though. Dude, Brandon you know, even Perlini. With Taints. Did you hear about Brandon Perlini's um, podcast? I, you know what? I saw a video clip of him on YouTube, and it said, "Here are my favorite players I played with." And I, and yeah. I didn't click it, but I, I'm going to. He talked about Taser. He said that Taves was, um, he was an incredible captain. That Taves was a guy. He said in the locker room, he kept everybody's spirits up. He um, made sure everybody stayed in contact with each other. They had group chats. When he said when guys, when, when clicks were starting to form, that Taves would put an end to it, dude, so that everybody would feel included. Dude. Yeah, like, that's like, very important. He, yeah, dude, yeah. It, it is. And, you know, these are things, you know, going on behind the scenes that we don't see. And he said that Taves actually went to bat for him with the coaches saying that um, he deserved the opportunity. And he said he got a lot of playing time after that. He goes, unfortunately, you know, it, it didn't pan out for me, but, um, you know, if it wasn't for Taves, you know, they, you know, they, they would have sent him down. Yeah. yeah. And that's huge, dude. I mean, that's huge to hear about, you know, Taves and his leadership on um, not only is he, you know, trying to keep the team together, but, you know, stopping clicks from forming inside of the inside of the locker room that's important dude. that's huge dude yeah it's important in all sports you know if sometimes you'll you'll get guys that you know the good players usually gravitate to each other and, and stuff ain't going right there's people point fingers and this guy ain't pulling his weight and these guys are all out doing this drinking all night blah 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 stuff like that and you got to put an end to it you know, you know i mean I, i've been on teams where when I played, it was a family group. Like everybody got along, they'd razz each other. It, it was all in fun, but it was it was a brotherhood. Then I've been on teams where like the fucking guys would motherfuck you, and you didn't say a word to them. Like it, it just <laughs> they it didn't work. Yeah, and you know I had a really tight high school team uh, my junior year, and felt you know everybody was you know, good spirits and stuff and getting along and winning. And then, you know, a couple of years before that, it was just like, seems like there was like a civil war going on and it, teams don't work <laughs> like that. You know, yeah. it did, they never work. And that's cool to hear that uh, Taser was going to bat for these guys and trying to put an end to that stuff. You know, I had mentioned to you before, I think it was a few years ago when he was still playing and, you know, guys were getting traded and, and Taves is pissed off. And, yeah, we, we, yeah. and we and we had we had the conversation where you're like he had to have known that he was getting traded you know and how could he be so upset you know but yeah. and I and I told you that I think that he just really buys into the you know when when the, when the start of the season comes he buys into the into the 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 roster and I and obviously dude it looks like he did man you know he's probably he thinking, loved Hagel he loved Brandon Hagel and I think that really was. That was it. He was like, you know what? I was really pissed off I lost this guy. Because that guy fit well with Taves. He did. The speed. And look at him in Tampa right now. They love him. They gave him an eight-year extension or seven-year, whatever it was. And, and he's playing with Braden Point and Kucherov. And he's just destroying there. He's playing great. And Taves absolutely loved that kid. He's like, this kid should have been the future for us. Yeah. But, you know, you got a new GM with a different vision. And... You know, he wants to he wants to do stuff different and he had value and then the dude was a fifth round pick. We got two first rounders and two current NHL players and I, I think it was a slam dunk for him. And, it goes to show you that yeah. I think that, that Davidson might have had a point on um I don't want I think he moved on too early, but a point of you know what? Taves w dominates this locker room. And there is yeah, no there's there's no room for anybody to step up. There's no room for any of these young kids to step up leadership wise while he's here because he is just too huge of a presence. And we're not even talking about his Stanley Cup wins, you know. Um, I would. I mean, I think that he would have been a good captain to to get you know Bedard ready or Kaner, but. Um, yeah. I agree with that. I, I I wish they were both here for, with Bedard. I thought it would be so cool of a passing of the torch type yeah. of thing. Even Kaner have an A on and, you know, Taves wearing that C. And, hey, guys, this is my last. Like with Bergeron. 
He oh, finished yeah. the year. He goes, this is my last year. Um, and then they were passing the C to the rat, Marshawn. And, um, you know, I, I respect that. I think that's really cool. The Bruins uh, do it different. I, I really like that. They don't slap a C on a young kid. They yeah. pass it down to the next guy. And But, you know, I think it would be cool if Taves or would, you know, it'd be like a cool little ceremony. Hey, kid, here's your C. You're the man now and stuff like that. And hit. The nineteen goes up in the rafters, but oh, God, you know, dude, no, I just I feel cry. like he wasn't at the Chelios um, a ceremony. I feel like probably some bitterness, maybe some bad blood going on. Dude, a lot of people said nobody has seen him. Yeah, and just, I think that he's I, got some. I think he's got some health things going on. You got to just step away and not wa- get involved with yeah. hockey. You just got to step away, and I think that's what he's doing right now. He's just it needs a complete life reset with it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he next might be, year he'll come back and uh, dude, he come, might be you taking know, that. Um, he might be taking that cold hard pill that you know, like my my career's over. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, honestly, dude, I think that it would it would have been poetic if Kane could have given it to, if Kane could have worn the C for a season. He he didn't wear you a letter. Know. He didn't wear you a letter know. for a long time, man. He didn't he didn't wear a letter. Um, and then he he finally got one, uh, but it would have been nice for him to be like the like the last of the guard, saying, "Here you go, kid, man. Good luck," you know, type of a thing. But it is what it is, man. So who do you got between be uh, awesome. who do you got between the Rangers and Panthers? Who do you got coming out of that? This is tough, man. It's really tough, but I think. Both well four lines balanced, well balanced teams. Uh, good defense, uh, goaltending. Two Russians. Go figure. The Russians are taking over the goaltending world. Uh, man, this is hard. It's going seven, but I think I'm going to give it to Matthew Kachuk and the Panthers. I think mm. this guy is going to rise to the occasion, play like a monster, get in the heads. I think Matt Rempe is going to be a factor for the for the the Rangers, but. He's going to go against some tough cookies on this Panthers team, man. They don't take that stuff. That Sam Bennett knocked Brad Marchano for a couple games with a, just a vicious punch. Uh, no suspension for it. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the Panthers in seven. Really? Yeah. What do you, I'm thinking that the Rangers might have a hard time with the squad. I think that the squad's going to be too much. I think it might be five to one. I mean, I mean uh, five games. Five, five and uh, Rangers and five. Yeah. Wow. No, no, no. I, Panthers and five. Oh, Panthers. Oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 the Rangers are just everybody's playing well. Chris Kreider woke up. He had a game of his life. Legendary performance for him. Hat trick in the third period. Uh, Zibanejev playing good. Uh, Lafreniere, a youngster, playing well. Brad Man finally, finally showing up in the playoffs for these guys. I, I just, I think the the momentum is still with the Panthers from that last year's run they had. They were not supposed to be there, and they they said, you know what, we're gonna. They won the division this year. They made the final the previous year. Got you know Vegas beat them. They were banged up, but they said, you know what, next year is our year. And I, I think they're just got so much momentum right now. I think they're gonna. Beat the Rangers in seven, and I think they're going to face Dallas in the final. Mm. That would be an interesting matchup between Dallas and um, Dallas and uh, the Panthers. Yeah, I think that Vancouver. Very. I think Vancouver beats Edmonton, and then uh, goes seven games with Dallas. Yeah, both another solid squad. I mean. You look at Dallas, that young kid, Wyatt Johnston. Did you see he was the youngest player to get a power play goal and a shorthanded goal in a playoff game? No. You know who he shares that title with? Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> this kid is going to be a stud. Uh, Jamie Ben. he's been playing with Jamie Ben, who's had a pretty good playoff, man. He's yeah. he's a factor out there. He's throwing that body around. Yeah, Tyler he Sagan. is, dude. He's been hitting guys, man. He's he's uh, he's hungry, dude. This Dallas team's hungry. They he got, knows this like is their said, squ- this is his chance. This is it. I mean, I think this is their last dance. These uh, these older guys, Pavelski, Ben, Matt Duchesne, even he had the game winner the other night. Yeah, he had a great great season with uh, the 
the uh, Predators a couple seasons ago, and they bought him out. Yeah, I think they he scored did. Forty, and he was he was on a podcast recently saying, "Wow, he was so like he, he couldn't believe it." He's like, "I think I, I saw that." I, he goes, "I couldn't believe I was cut. I was bought out, and he I took the chance. I wanted to play with these older guys that I knew I played with, and." Join this young squad of uh, Rupe Hints, Robertson, Wyatt Johnston, uh, Jake Ottinger, and Nett. He's been playing very well, and man, they just—they're they're a solid team. And e- even all like, and I, I would say there's three teams that are built perfect. You can't if the Oilers win, their their goaltending is gonna—it's not gonna pull through against a team right. like Dallas. Uh, Vancouver, Thatcher Demko's been hurt. That's their goalie. He's been hurt. But um, he's not back yet. That young, that young rookie, uh, he's playing well tonight. He had a rough night, but I, I don't. I think Dallas is. It's, it's their easiest series is going to be the Western Conference Final because I think the two teams they just went to war against those, those guys were a lot better than them. Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I thought Colorado was going to win. But you know, dude, Vancouver. They've been uh, finding. They've been finding ways to win. They could have. Yeah, they could. They could have won. Colorado could have won. They got that Stanley Cup pedigree, and they just, uh, I think they did well keeping, you know, Big McKinnon at bay, you know, and then Kale McCarr yeah. showed up one game. He was, he's sensational, that guy. Uh, just fell short. At these, these top, these three teams that are waiting right now that are w- waiting for the next round to start, man, it's just, they're, you look at, on paper, they're very similar. They got, everything's like checked off. <laughs> Coaching's good. Goaltending solid. Defense good. I mean, there's not too many holes on these teams. The the, the next, like I said, Oilers or Vancouver, they they will be the weakest team in the final four. Whoever wins. <laughs> and and they're still good. They're still yeah. good. Don't get me wrong, but they're, yeah. they're they're in a different class compared to these three now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, we gotta jump back to uh Jeremy Swayman, who had a fantastic playoff. He's going to be a restricted free agent. He took over the net. They think he's getting paid, dude. And they, they think Linus Allmark's going to get traded somewhere. And really? Yeah, the, the, the goal. They got a good little relationship. You know, they do that goalie hug after. And yeah. It's, it's, it's good, man. If you got salary cap for two good goalies, look, what it take, look where it takes you. It takes you far. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in the end, it's, it's one man's job, you know. And I think uh, Swayman, 25 years old, he's going to probably get a, I would say, a max deal. An eight-year, I don't know what goalies are going for now. Probably $8 million, $68 million contract. And they're going to have to move, they're going to have to move guys. So I, I think he's going to get paid big time this this summer. Jeez. Man, and then we've got other teams. It's kind of like like goalies are kind of like the like the quarterbacks of uh, hockey. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you can get a good goalie, you don't um, you don't drop them. But hey, that's all that we got for you this week, man. The the, the playoffs are really uh, kicking away, and everybody, let us know uh, what you think. Who do you got, who do you guys think are going to win the Western Conference uh, Finals? Western Conference and Eastern Conference Finals, your predictions, and we'll see you on the next one. This is the Tomahawk, and we're out of here.